This is how we are all living in the past and how it affects our experience of the present. I'm going to define two terms for you before I get started, just so we all know what I'm referring to. This is called an operational definition. The first term is sensation. I'm defining sensation as the receiving of information about the world around and within us through the stimulation of specialized nerve cells located within the body. That ought to make things clear as mud. Think of a sensation like a camera. A camera records what it can quote unquote see. In essence, it is an objective measure of the world in front of it. The camera has no judgment or opinion. It just absorbs light waves and records them. The second term is perception. To perceive is to not only absorb the sensory information, but to assess it, sort it, and determine how to respond to it. This might be anything from a physical response, an emotional response, or a behavioral response. In other words, perception requires some degree of judgment. Why am I talking about this? The reality is that what we experience as a present sensation is actually a perception. And what we're perceiving is a sensation from the very recent past combined with stored perceptions of more distant past events combined with expectations of future events leading to a perception of what appears to be the present but is actually an interpretation of the past. Let's look at this little stimulus here on the left of your screen. These are sound waves. Objects moving through space, whether it be a rock falling on the ground or someone else's vocal cords vibrating, displace air, which creates a wave, which impacts our eardrum, which causes these little bones to vibrate, which is then translated into a pattern of electrical impulses, which are then passed along various pathways of brain cells called neurons. So let's talk about some important numbers. The first number is 0.08. 0.08 seconds, also known as 80 milliseconds, is how long it takes for that stimulus, the moving air molecules impacting our eardrums, to enter into our conscious awareness. In other words, the pattern of electrical messages that are passed along those neural pathways in the brain make their way to the area of the brain most closely associated with conscious awareness, the left frontal lobe. Once it reaches that lobe, we become aware that the pattern of firing we heard is actually the sound that we call the name TED. So to review, your lungs and vocal cords and tongue and teeth all work together to expel air in a certain pattern that causes electrical signals to be passed from the eardrum to the left frontal lobe where I hear the name TED. That process takes 0.08 seconds. To put that in perspective, it's less than the blink of an eye. This top bar represents that time, 0.08 seconds. This bottom bar is an even smaller fraction of time, 0.013 seconds or 13 milliseconds if you want to be one of the cool kids. This amount of time is all that's needed for our senses to translate sensory information into electrical impulses and encode them, which is a fancy way of saying storing them in memory. Let's see roughly how fast that is. First at a speed that's easily visible, and then at a speed that is closer to the actual speed. So pretty fast. So if it only takes 13 milliseconds to store the information and 80 milliseconds for us to become conscious of that information, what's happening in the other 67 milliseconds? This is where our brain is comparing the sensory information with previous experiences with the same or similar information, combining the previous information with the current information to make a prediction about what the current information must be, and send that prediction on to our conscious awareness. When it arrives in our conscious awareness, there is no hint of this process having taken place. As you say the name Ted, I hear the name Ted. It all seems to happen simultaneously in real time, but in fact, this 80 millisecond lag including the 67 millisecond time for interpretation, causes what we believe to be a sensation to actually be a perception. This is why people mishear song lyrics, because our brains hear some of the sounds of the words and fill in the blanks with what is expected. Why does this matter? It matters because it really lends some weight to the idea that perception is reality. In fact, 
It might even make more sense if we reverse that sentence. Reality is perception. It means that we can all be a bit less certain of what we see, hear, taste, smell, feel, remember, and every other way we can interact with the world around and within us. This might cause some people anxiety, but for me, it's an exciting idea to know that there may be a whole other version of experiences that I've had that I know nothing about. It frees me from the need to be right because I know that another person's experience of the same information is equally right based on perception. So how are we all living in the past? What we experience as the present is actually an interpretation of a sensory stimulus that we received approximately 80 milliseconds ago, which was then interpreted through a filter created by a combination of past experience and future expectation, all in less than the blink of an eye. And now you know.